Good morning, my beautiful diamonds. Today is ah, June 24th. It's Monday. This is me at the uh, Emma Cocina. The Emma Cocina restaurant. It was The food was outstanding. I had such an amazing time. Today, speaking of eating, <clears throat> we're going to talk about eating for God's glory. We're going to look at the scripture, Genesis chapter 2, verse 16, where it says, But the Lord told him, You may eat fruit from any tree in the garden. After God created Adam and Eve, he gave them some very simple dining instructions. You may eat freely of every tree of the garden. That's what he said in Genesis chapter 2, verse 16. Did he say, you may eat freely of every Krispy Kreme on the street? No. Did he say, you may eat freely of every bag of chips? No. He did not tell them to freely eat fast food, frozen pizza, or even low-fat cookies. <laughs> God told Adam and Eve to eat from the garden. And we do very well to stick to his advice. We have been flooded with an overwhelming amount of bad diet information from past decades that has clouded the very simple truths of healthy eating. Eat the foods that come from God in as close a state as possible to how God made them and you can't go wrong. Because we know we can't trust these humans out here because they're money hungry. Learn to do everything for God's glory, including eating. Look at your dinner plate and ask if what you are about to eat is mostly what God created for you. Don't view eating as a secular event that has nothing to do with your relationship with God. Don't forget that God put Adam and Eve in the garden of Eden and told them what they could eat. <clears throat> Now, if eating had nothing to do with him and their walk with him, he probably would not have mentioned food. This advice isn't a diet I am recommending. It's simply godly wisdom to live a balanced life. There's nothing wrong with enjoying a treat in moderation. Each time you choose good, healthy foods, you are choosing life, which is God's gift to you. He wants you to look great and he wants you to feel great. Keep in mind that your body is the temple of God and the fuel you put into it determines how it will operate and for how long. Make sure that you are not hurting yourself by eating junk food excessively. Remember, good choices will reap good benefits. So take a step of faith and begin to trust God to lead you in your eating habits. Ask him to teach you how to eat healthy, and watch to see how much better you're going to feel. Yes, what did I have here? I had an amazing salad at the Ama Cocina. The Ama Cocina, it was a, a Spanish uh, restaurant that my son really enjoys. And we went with a couple of friends, <clears throat> and the food was amazing. I had chicken and a nice salad. And I always get lemon water or I get ginger ale with my meals. So I think I can feel pretty guilt-free a little bit here. Yeah. And like it's noted here, there's nothing wrong with time to time, from time to time, eating, you know, um, some good treats. But the key, as in everything else, is being balanced and doing all things in moderation. So now, my beautiful diamonds, it's time for your power thoughts. Are you ready? Yeah. Hello, my name is Josh Andrew. I'm a pastor in Phoenix, Arizona, and I would love to share the verse of the day with you. The verse of the day is John chapter 8, verse 32. Jesus himself quoting here, We will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And what Jesus is saying to the crowd and what he's saying to you is we need to know the truth. And the truth is himself. Jesus in John 14, 6 says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. 
Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the embodiment of everything we read throughout Scripture, that a life of freedom is not found in an idea, in principles, but more a person, and his name is Jesus. So if you're struggling with something, if you're going through something today, just know freedom is found in Jesus and Jesus alone. This is so wonderful. Tell me something, where do you need God's truth to replace lies in your life? Because it's a proven, it's a well-known fact that truth brings freedom. I know that's right. Because once I learned the truth about the Jehovah's Witness organization and I stopped following the governing body and started following Jesus Christ, he says, I am the truth, I am the way, and I am the life. And once I started following him, I was free from so many burdens that that religion causes you to carry. So there were no lies told here. Know the truth and the truth will set you free. Because when we know the truth, we are no longer living according to a lie. This is when it becomes free to living according to how God has designed us to live. And that is such a gift that he has made this truth available to us in his word. That, and it's right there at our fingertips. That's the beauty of it. It's so easy to get access of information when we need proper guidance. Now, and I know a lot of people don't believe that the Bible is the word of God, which I don't understand that when you think about how humans can send messages from the moon down to the earth. And when you look at how humans have, de de have created artificial intelligence and they have designed computers and the internet, if humans can do that, what makes people think that God is so limited that he can't possibly make it so that his children will have a letter, a letter to guide them into the proper way of living? It's amazing to me, it never, it never fails to shock me how humans put so much limitation on what God can do. Just like a, a boss or a manager calls you into his office, his secretary, and he tells her to take this letter, she's the one writing it, but she's not the author of that letter. The manager or the boss is the author. And even though God didn't personally write it, he had his apostles and he had his chosen ones to take dictation. So why is it that humans think that imperfect man or imperfect human beings can do so much, but God is incapable of guiding his children properly? Like I said, that's just mind baffling. It's mind boggling that humans uh, can't seem to figure that part out. Anyway, my beautiful diamonds... Let's do your Bible trivia. Yay! Okay, your first question. What miracle did Jesus perform at the marriage in Cana? Was it turning water into wine? Or the fig tree with withered away? Or healed Peter's mother-in-law? Or did he walk on water as found at John chapter 2, verse 1 through 11. Next question, how did Jesus reveal the one who would betray him? A, washed his feet. B, dipped a piece of bread and passed it to him. C, poured out the wine and passed it to him. Or D, took off his belt and placed it at his feet. Matthew 26, 23. Lastly, who went from Paul on his who went with Paul on his first missionary journey? Was it A Silas, B Stephen, C Barnabas, or was it D Mark? And you can find that answer at Acts chapter 12, verse 25. So there you have it, my beautiful diamonds. Jehovah loves you, Jesus Christ loves you, and I love you too. Don't forget to be mindful of eating more healthy. Because leave it up to these humans, you know they don't care what happens to our bodies. And always before you eat, ask God to cleanse it so it may benefit your body and your mind. Twinkle, twinkle, twinkle.